painting I'm going to do today is for a very special reason. It's my friend Claire's birthday this coming week, at the end of the week. So I thought I would do a painting of um, a photograph that was taken on our recent trip to Ireland, which we did a couple of weeks ago. And we were driving down Strandford Lock, which is on the sort of the western side of the Ards Peninsula in Northern Ireland. And the sun was just starting to set. And my dad was driving and I asked him to pull into a lay-by so that we could just get out and watch the, the sun setting behind the hills in the distance. And it was a beautiful evening. It was quite calm and the sky was beautiful colour. And I took a few photographs and some video. And it was only last week actually that I thought that there would, it would probably make a nice painting or a nice inspiration for a painting. Um, so that's what I've decided to do. So that's the project that I'm going to embark on today. Now I haven't done any sort of preliminary sketches or anything. Obviously I've got a photograph to guide me. But I want to sort of enhance the photograph. Make it a bit more interesting I suppose. But nevertheless to conjure up the atmosphere that, that was um, uh, very prominent on the night. So I'm just going to be guided by the painting. I'm going to see where it goes. I have no idea what's going to end up on this blank sheet of canvas. We shall soon find out. So um, here we go. Now on this painting I'm using something I haven't used before. So this is a trial for me. It's a, a slow drying medium which is what I mean a, a, acrylic has lots of advantages mainly because it dries very quickly and it's very permanent and cheaper than oils. But sometimes the drying process can just happen too quickly and it works to your disadvantage. And for this I want to use a lot of blending of, of colours and layers and stuff. So I came across the slow drying medium. So I'm going to mix, it's just a clear gel. And you mix it in equal portions or not as the case may be with the, the various colours paint. And it just slows down the drying process and makes it easier to do sort of wet on wet things so that's what I'm using that's what I'm partly going to be using today so I've just put a, a white wash on there I've added some of the slow drying medium just to slow down the process a bit and just put a little touch of yellow on there just a very slight touch and I think what I'll do is with the big brush I'm just going to gently pull that across and just sort of blend it in a wee bit. I just want there to be hints of colour, nothing too, nothing too extravagant at this stage. Okay, so there we go. We're just sort of starting to form colours now. Right, I think I'm going to put in a few clouds around as well, just something very light. Just adding a few clouds in here. And I don't want to make them too... I don't want to dominate, I just want... Um, Sometimes even a few little wispy suggestions of a cloud more than it to dominate what's going on. Because there's going to be a lot happening down here. So, you know, I'm just getting a brush now, a dry brush. And just sort of blending the whole thing. Very lightly, nothing too strenuous. Just gently blending the whole lot together. Wispish, wispy clouds, unthreatening is probably a good. I'm already seeing the benefit of using the um, slow drying medium because it really is sort of it, it, it's doing exactly what it's supposed to do, which is just slowing the process of drying, which means. It's easier, so much easier to blend colours in. So I'm just gonna
Right, I think I'm gonna finish the Clyde. I think that, that I think that the Clyde is finished. I'm quite happy with that for now. Uh, no doubt I'll go over it and change a few things. But for now I quite like the colours. It's a very subtle pastely sunset. So I think I'll leave it like that for now and start to fill in the foreground. Now there's hills in the background here. And then you've got water here and the shoreline here with pebbles and some trees and things. So um, I think what I'll do now is put in the darker colours in the background and work forwards. So we'll start with the hills, undulating hills in the background. So I'm going to do that next, I think. Yeah. Okay, so we're just adding the, the shoreline here. And uh, obviously it looks very dark and uninteresting at the moment, but as it gets closer to the foreground, obviously it gets darker. So by here, it's going to be virtually saturated black. Now doesn't that look very dull and uninteresting at this stage? I'm going to colour, I'm going to actually add colour on top of the black. use the black as sort of the, the base colour. Up to a point. And there we go, that's the completed picture. No, I'm only joking. Okay, so that's the, uh, that's going to be water in there. We've got the shoreline here, which has got covered in rocks and things here. The background there, Scrabo Tower is about there. And there's trees and things up here. So, uh, right. I'm going to let that dry a little bit, I think, and then I'm going to, I don't know what I'm going to do next, I'll have to stop and think about it. Okay, I'm just going to, I'm going to just build up layers of colour on the water for now. I know it's not very accurate looking at the moment, but for the time being, I'm just going to build up layers of various colours. And eventually and blend them together and hopefully end up with something of a some sort of semblance of water about it. I realise that's too yellowy orangey at the moment. I think there's bloody floorboard. There's lots of ripples on this water as well. So um, yeah, this is this is going to be a difficult one actually.
layers on the water just to give it a bit of I was going to say I'd give it a bit of depth but not necessarily physical depth Water is like a melting pot of colours, various colours. It takes in the colours of the sky, of the the surroundings. So there's a, there's there's a lot to get right with with water. Water collecting in puddles and stuff on the shoreline. It sort of has to be taken into account as well. So yeah, we're slowly getting there, slowly getting there. And I'm sort of experimenting here because I'm not quite sure how to do this, but I'm trying to recreate a pebbly beach. And I think the only way to do it is build up layers of sort of blacks and greys and blues to make up the contour of um, of rocks and then just sort of dab them on almost the same as doing leaves on a tree actually to be honest except using different colours but obviously it'll work it's okay in the background but in the foreground you'll have to use something a bit more sophisticated because otherwise it would look, would look quite right. When you get up close you'll have to sort of look like rocks otherwise it'll be a bit shambolic looking. Right, I'm going to use a slightly thicker Okay, well I've done a bit more of this foreground here and I think at the moment I'm just going to let that dry and see what it comes out like and then yeah I'm going to come back to it and uh, have a look and see where I go from here. I'm not quite sure, I'm sort of at that not quite sure stage at the moment so I'm going to leave it for a few minutes let some of this paint dry because it's still quite wet and uh, and then take it from there. Okay well just a bit of an update I've put on um, a little bit more here in the mid ground here there's a few buildings knocking about there was a bit of a pier here which I've just put on a little figure standing here against the lighter reflection of the water so Actually that, that uh, slow drying medium <laughs> works really well because actually the sky is still wet and there's still little touches I need to do uh, but I can't do it because it's still wet and I don't want it to be wet. So I'm going to leave it now to dry um, and the, the water actually is still wet as well and I want to, to add a bit more to that as well. So I think at this stage I'm just going to leave it and let it dry for a while. And then come back to it but it's starting to take shape and I'm, I'm, I'm quite pleased with it so far okay so the paint has now dried I think it's still a wee bit tacky up there but that's, that's that I'm happy enough for that so what I'm gonna do now is work a bit more on the foreground so I've sort of done the background texture just sort of put um, a suggestion of, of a rough terrain in there but I think I'd like to make it more look like pebbles, so I'm going to do some pebbles. So I'm going to use um, a filbert brush, which is one like that. I don't know if you can see that. And then I'm going to put sort of two color, one color on each side, and then hopefully be able to blend the two so that it makes look, makes them look like smooth stones or rocks or whatever on the seashore. 
Um, and then I've got a bit more work to do here. I'm not how that, that mast is off. I'm going to remove that and redo that. And then finally work more on the sea itself. And uh, then I've got to put in Scrabo Tower, which is a landmark very prominent on the headland there, which is just above the town of Newton Ard. So I'm going to put that there. I've already put a little mark where I want it to be. And then um, I'm going to take it from there. So first things first, I'll do a wee bit of work on the shoreline. So I'm just giving a little semi-circular twist to the brush. And it's just to give a, an indication of sort of smooth stones and rocks. It was a very rocky, but predominantly very stony um, shoreline. So I'm literally just giving a suggestion, just giving a little twist to the brush. I'm just going to work, start working on this background shoreline here. So I'm using just a bit of white, a bit of yellow, and just the merest little touch of red in here. And I'm just going to sort of dab that in. So water's like anything, it, it, uh, it reflects and refracts lots of different colours, especially at this time of the day, of course, the sun is setting, there's colour in the sky, there's there's various shades of colour surrounding it, and the, and the stillness of the water just, you know, it plays around with all the colours, which means you get, you get a huge variety of colours in the water. And I think at this stage you just I just build up the layers basically. And eventually you'll get something that's sort of that looks right. I'm just putting the suggestion of, of little waves sort of lapping in as well. So I'm just going along with a brush and just creating little just little dark patches with a there's a slight and I mean very slight, I mean there's no but there's there's sort of the natural lapping of the water that goes on. Also adding a little bit of reflection into the water here. I'm just going to go around the shoreline and just detail to that, just where the water hits the shoreline. There's 
also a suggestion, just when you put a few highlights like this in, it's also a suggestion that the tide has recently left the shoreline and these rocks are sort of still a bit glistening from the remains of the sea that once covered them. Right, well I've done a bit more work on it. I've been working mainly on the on the sea here to try and make it look as realistic as, a, as possible. Um, but as predominantly I've been working on the shoreline there and, and doing bits and bobs just to, to bring it all together. So I think I'm at the stage now where I'm happy to leave it for now and, um, and sort of live with it for a day or two and see, no doubt I'll, I'll find something that I want to change but I think for the time being anyway I think I'll, um, I'll probably leave that as it is and if there's any developments um, I will let you know. So I've just given Claire her painting so Thank you so much, Steve. Pleasure. <laughs> what, my wall? No, it's not off. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it lovely? I'm so impressed with the colours. It's massive as well. It'll like fill my wall nicely. <laughs> wow, I can add to my Buchanan collection. <laughs>